My name's Anthea Holland, I'm the director of Mindsong and it grew out of a project that I was asked to run um, for the Three Choirs Festival back in 2007. I, I was just told, or asked rather, whether I would run an outreach project. It was an opportunity for me to bring a whole lot of things together. I'd worked in the Forest of Dean for some 25 years as a GP and during that time um, I had had a lot of experience of visiting patients in care homes in the practice area where most of them had some degree of memory loss. My name's Nicola Jacobson, I'm a dance movement psychotherapist uh, I specialise in working with people who are affected by dementia, um, mainly people with dementia themselves, but also with family members and uh, family carers. Most of my work is done in groups, so I work with groups of people, who, um, older people who are affected by dementia, and I use music and song and movement to engage people. My name's Sylvia Ardron, and I've been a Mind Song volunteer for just over a year. Um, well, from the beginning, really. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy volunteering. I, I've had a, a career of 40 years in the health service as a nurse, and when I retired from that, I wanted to do something with my time that was still in the sort of caring role, really. I've always enjoyed working with old people, and I love music and mind song seemed to put those two things together. When somebody with dementia comes into a care home, it's often a very sad time for everybody concerned because most people would prefer not to have to be in a care home and most families would prefer to be able to manage to um, continue caring for their, their relative, their loved one at home. So it's a very traumatic time when people come into a nursing home. It's also a time when people know that they really um, are, are going to be here until, until the end. It can be quite a depressing and sad time. It can be a time when for people they are losing a lot of, a lot of independence, a lot of the ability to do the many things that they may have done when they were younger people. They are now very much more dependent on other people and, and very aware sometimes about their, their loss of self-esteem, their loss of independence, their loss of ability to really clearly make choices. So a lot of my job is trying to, to help with that process of coming to terms with, with that loss. I'm Fiona Taylor and I'm a music therapist. I did my training at the University of West of England, which is in Bristol. I came from a musical background, so I'd already worked as a flute player in London. So I worked for about 15 years as a, as a musician, but things changed, actually I'll be honest with you, it was after I'd had my children, that there was um, an element about life that I, I became more curious about and, and it was much more the nurturing side of life. My name is Jane Crampton, I am a music therapist. Um, I've been working for Mindsong since 2006, since its inception, when I was asked by the Three Choirs Festival if we would be willing as music therapists to offer music therapy into two residential care homes and one day centre. I've always sung, I've played the piano and done different things and music has meant a great deal to me both performing it and listening to it throughout my life. So I thought I'm going to do something with music and the people I really want to get to are those Cinderella individuals, those most vulnerable, most forgotten. And to me, that is people in care homes, the elderly, because we had to focus somewhere. And so originally it was elderly, it's expanded because people with dementia don't have to be 80 they may be as young as 40 and there are other neurodegenerative problems things like Parkinson's disease Huntington's disease um, very cruel diseases um, but which have very close links with what we do and I think the thing about it that drew me into it in the first place was 
just the way you can use improvised music and obviously familiar songs as well to um, connect with people. That, that's absolutely the crux of it for me is just you are working with people at a really intimate, deep level where music is the tool for connection and whatever state of dementia they seem to be at that there's this it's like magic I mean you, you walk into a room and you start singing a song that they know and there's somebody who's amazingly isolated whose condition having dementia means that all sorts of ways of communicating have just shut down and are not aren't possible to them anymore and, and maybe even a sense of their own self has dissolved in some way because and maybe a sense of being able to connect, connect with people they know and love has also gone because they don't recognize them but as soon as the music gets going, then something happens that means that they are freshly in touch with um, their past, with themselves, with who they are, and, and the joy in a room, um, not just individually, but when a whole group of people are interacting and socialising with each other through the music, it is just extraordinary. Music and rhythm are things that touch people very deeply and very easily. It's very there are very few people who do not like music. It's usually a matter of finding what sort of music is right for that person at, at that time. But it is a universal language. It is something that people who are often way beyond language, as, as we would recognise it, meaningful communication with others around them, will respond to music. And that's, that's very beautiful, it's very precious, and it's very important to not only the residents, but also their families, and the staff to see people responding in a way that they may not often respond through other daily living activities. Music is such a non-invasive medium. It is something where you can express yourself. Singing is so good for people. It's good physically, it's good for your lungs, it's good for your posture, it's good for facial muscles, for your, for your mouth, for your speech. It's also good socially and emotionally, and you can take part in singing with other people at whatever level you want to. You can start off a, a singing session with nobody really engaging with you, and then gradually you get those little signs that people are actually starting to think of the words and sing along and, and smile, and it's, it's just, fabulous really and you feel that you've unlocked something that's been shut away and uh, it's great. Music therapy uses the skills of the therapist to draw out what there is within people that is still locked in but accessible in some way. I use a variety of different uh, props to help to engage people. Um, I use a large balloon, um, which is uh, really good for helping people to become more alert and more responsive. And I use a, um, an elastic sort of uh, ribbon to connect people because I think for a lot of people holding hands isn't necessarily appropriate, it can be quite intense. And also physically, sometimes people are disabled so that it makes it hard for them to, to hold hands. So it's quite a nice way of being able to see a connection within a group, a nice way of maintaining a connection for people. And the circle that I always run the sessions in helps people to feel safe um, and to feel included and part of something. Um, I think one of, the, uh, one of my main aims is I feel if at the end of the group people feel that they have been able to do something together um, and that they feel that they're part of part of a group then that feels like it's been successful. When people come to a series of sessions we will often see that someone who is completely engaged on the first week may be restless, may be wanting to leave the session. By the end of 12 weeks of therapy they will be calmer, they may be able to join in in a small way but even if they can just sit. That for them may be the most tremendous thing. I get such a buzz out of connecting with other human beings. It's, it's, um, it's a really beautiful human thing to do. I love being human with other humans in the room and just touching and connecting and the tool that we're using is music. I really enjoy it. I feel like I learn an awful lot from working with people with dementia and it's lovely seeing people um, seeing people engage, seeing people relax 
um, seeing people feel that they're part of something, that they have a purpose. And all those things are very, um, very rewarding. There's a lot of evidence now that, that music is something that reaches through to people. Our wish in Mind Song is that music is very, very much a part of a person's care when they go into a residential home, that it is there offered to all their residents. Um, I think it needs to be embedded, the importance of music and the arts in health in general is, 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 should be a priority in somebody's care. As a society where there are at least three quarters of a million people with dementia at the moment, and within 10, 15 years, there'll be a million. Um, we've got to be more responsive as a society. And we want to educate people about dementia, to inform them at school level, college level, other community levels, and show them that creativity is still possible and that music is always there for them.